The last 10 months have not been a good time to be a gamer. GPUs have been impossible to buy, out of stock, hoovered up by scalpers and resold on eBay for frankly extortionate prices. But for the first time in 10 months, things are actually getting better. Let me explain why after a quick word from today's video sponsor. Power up your next gaming PC with an AMD GPU and CPU for the ultimate Team Red gaming experience. With a great range of Gigabyte RX 6000 series graphics cards like this range topping 6900 XT available, you can play the biggest titles out there at the best frame rates. Combined with one of the latest Ryzen processors and a Gigabyte X570 motherboard and unlock the power of smart access memory, allowing your GPU and CPU to work together like never before. Learn more and browse the range of Gigabyte motherboards and GPUs at the first link in the description below. Believe it or not, I've actually been one of the more negative people when it comes to predicting when GPUs might be back on shelves at reasonable prices. If you'd have asked me two months ago, I would have said March of next year at the earliest. But I've largely kept these views to myself and kept the channel as positive as I can. You guys watch because you want to see great PCs, and yes, you want to be able to buy them. But the last thing you need is me ranting on, despite the fact that we have, of course, got a couple of RTX cards in the office. Before we look at why things are getting better, though, we need to look at the causes of this situation and they actually might be more complicated than what you think. Of course, a rise in cryptocurrency mining is partly to blame. Being able to mine currencies like Ethereum, which you can convert into cold hard cash with a graphics card has had a hugely negative impact. Mining farms all around the world have been hoovering up hundreds, if not thousands of GPUs and causing these huge spikes in GPU supply taking away cards that could have gone to gamers. This spike in demand though came at the worst possible time for the GPU market. In normal times, Nvidia or AMD might be able to ramp up production even further and make more and more cards, but that's been really difficult this year due to a global silicon shortage. Back when the pandemic began, a lot of factories had to close down for social distancing reasons, or heck, they even thought that people would be more bothered about buying toilet roll than they would graphics cards. In fact, the opposite happened. Everyone was stuck at home and what did they do? They gamed! Because of course, gamers are gonna game. They hoovered up every GPU they possibly could, and before you knew it, all the GPUs that were stored in retailers or warehouses have basically been sold to consumers, and there just weren't enough new graphics cards coming from the manufacturers over in China and Taiwan to make up for the demand over in the UK, the US, Canada, and basically all around the world. This silicon shortage hasn't just affected the GPU market. Some of the world's biggest car makers, for example, had to shut down plants because they didn't have the chips for the infotainment screens in a car. I mean, that's just completely ridiculous. But things could be changing, and for more than one reason. Like everything, this is a really complicated issue, and it's important to understand why. Factories have been ramping up production for some time now. TSMC, who make NVIDIA chips, have been investing huge sums of money in ramping up production, but we aren't likely to see the free fruits of that labour probably until next year or maybe even the year after. And while the supply of raw materials may have improved somewhat, it's still not great either. Nvidia's new restrictions on mining are not new, although they do appear to be working this time, which should disincentivize miners from buying the latest 3060 Ti, 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti GPUs amongst others. But perhaps the biggest factor is the crash we've seen in cryptocurrency this week. A crash that might actually stick this time and here's why. In order for miners to make money, the cryptocurrencies they mine need to be worth more than what the electricity costs, because of course running 100 GPUs uses a lot of power, hence a global power supply shortage every time cryptocurrencies spike. We're very close to the point now where there's just not enough money in it for miners to make any profit. But why is that? Why has it crashed this week? Countries are becoming increasingly aware of the environmental impact of mining. China have introduced some strong restrictions on what cryptocurrency transactions can take place in the country and reportedly shut down mining farms on a huge scale. This has led to GPU prices in China dropping significantly. This crackdown has been happening in multiple countries around the world. And if you'd like to learn more about what's going on in China with GPU mining, I'll link some much more articulate articles than how I could put it across in the description below. But James, I hear you say, won't cryptocurrencies just recover? We've had lots of mini crashes, lots of mini spikes over the last 12 months. This time might be different. Ethereum have actually announced that in the coming months, though they haven't specified an exact date, they'll be phasing out GPU mining pretty much entirely. There are other cryptocurrencies out there you can mine with a graphics card, but Ethereum is the one people are making the money on. A miner might turn around to you and say, I'm just gonna mine something different, but that's currently 
not where the money is. Ethereum are doing this because they're aware of the environmental impact that actually mining has. I think I read a statistic somewhere that they were using the equivalent of 20,000 RTX 3070s worth of electricity to mine one cryptocurrency and that that would drop by 99.5%, essentially removing GPU mining pretty much completely. That's not to say that other cryptocurrencies won't enter the market and won't spike, causing GPU miners to restart their mining rigs and get going, but we're fast approaching a point where mining a GPU might just not be profitable anymore. Once we get to that point, we'll see a huge tranche of secondhand 30 series and 20 series cards land on eBay, which will in turn cause prices to drop. But here's the thing, they already are. Now to be clear, GPUs are still a lot more expensive than what they should be, but these graphs on your screen now show how GPU pricing on the secondhand scalped market has actually been falling over the course of the last couple of weeks. This is quite exciting because it means that people can't just get lucky with a new egg raffle, buy a 3060 and flog it on eBay or Craigslist for an easy five or six hundred dollar profit. In fact, from my research, I saw 30 series cards on eBay at, you know, fairly reasonable prices compared to what people have been paying actually fail. They got no bids. People didn't buy them, which is exactly what we want to be happening. And it's for these reasons I'm feeling suddenly a lot more positive than I was a couple of months ago. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of gamers who have basically given up buying a 30 series card who will now start to try again as prices become more normal and the shortages could actually start to originate more from gamers than they could from miners. But if crypto continues in the way it does, Ethereum complete their transition essentially away from GPU mining, we could finally be at the beginning of the end, which excites me so much. I know that we have, you know, graphics cards, we can get hold of the GPUs, whether it be a loan sample because we're part of the UK media pool or whatever it is. But believe you me, I cannot wait for the day that I can put together a banging $1,000 gaming PC build that you can all actually buy for a decent price point. Genuinely keeping me so excited. And with that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you found today's video useful, insightful, and a bit informative. I hope I covered off some points that other people in this space might not have mentioned. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for the continued support. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.